Okay, visual elements of academic posters. Now here's one that I find really, really difficult when I am marking student work. Think about it this way. What we don't want with any academic poster is an essay with a background. Not the point. You're being asked to present information visually and so use the poster to really lean into that. I'm not saying have your entire poster as a photograph or just a picture or whatever. That's not the point. But visual elements are sometimes underutilized in a poster and there's a way to do them really, really well. Normally, this is going to mean creating them yourself. So yes, it does take a bit of work, but the rewards are very, very good. Now, step one is considering does this need to be here? So we can think about all of the considerations we've made so far about, you know, where it should be used and why it should be used and like, you know, is it taking up white space or any of those things? But also, does it need to be there? Can I visualize the thing I'm talking about and actually give more information than I can in speaking or in writing? So does it need to be there? You know, do I need to visualize something? But also, what is its utility? Does it have usefulness? Now, this is one that really, really annoys me because I work in psychology and you will see pictures of brains on lots of psychology students posters, even when the topic is nothing to do with the brain or brain imaging or anything like that. I often see pictures of brains with cogs in them and things like that. What am I learning by looking at that? So ask yourself that question. If I include this visual element on the poster, is somebody learning when they look at it? Is it helping me put information across? when they look at it. The best version of this is something like a diagram, a flow chart, a visual representation of statistics or something like that, because you can probably enhance that as well in your presentation or narration or something like that. Some of the best visual elements of posters I've ever seen actually have a secondary function as well, which is guiding the attention of the reader. So as an example, I'm a cognitive psychologist, and if we're talking about levels of processing, well, as we go from shallow processing to deeper processing, it actually takes the viewer down the poster and there's a separate visual element at the side, which is kind of a consistent thing to do with depth and the sea, basically. So there was a bunch of like divers and they were learning things as they dived down the poster. Absolutely brilliant. I loved that. And the thing is about that, you don't find a lot of those good visualizations that work perfectly by copying and pasting them off the internet. And this is where you're going to have to put in some work yourself, I'm afraid. The downside of this is time and effort. The upside of this is that it's going to fit into your poster in a much sleeker way. It's going to be consistent with your color palette, probably. And it's likely to be more informative and integrated into that narration than anything you can just pick up from the internet. So write yourself that checklist. Am I including visual elements? I bloody hope so. And also, why am I doing it? Are they useful? Can I create it myself? Does it have secondary purposes, such as moving the attention of the reader from one part to the other? Does it enhance something I'm talking about? Hopefully it does. Remember as well here, you can actually let your creative side out a little bit as well. So some advice is to look for things called infographics online. Infographics are ways of presenting visual information, normally statistics or charts or something like that, in a way which is engaging and visually appealing. I used to work in clinical trials and we would often have bar charts as things like syringes that were like, you know, the, the level of the bar was how much liquid was in the syringe. Or we would have like a world map and there would be a bottle of pills spilled onto the world map to show you which areas of the world that a particular drug was used in. Those types of things make your work incredibly unique, appealing from the outside. And also, they're going to get you loads of marks if this is a thing you're being marked on. So I'd probably do it.